answer? Water. Welcome to Barry Beat um, with Rich Morey and Michael Boogan. We should, we, we should probably start out with this is episode two of Ooh, the Barry Beat right. with this Rich is, Morey and Michael Boogan. That's right. With this special is, guest, Renita Marshall. And we're, we're struggling with the microphones because we only have one. And this one, I, I'm very leery of because it has glitter on it. Nobody and can see that. Nobody can see it? Well, you can kind you of see, see the green? red bow. You see that green right there? The green? Nope, because you're looking at the surface of the sun. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. But you can see the little green there. I, I came in, and I touched it on accident, and then, look, I still got glitter on my finger. Yeah, nobody can it's see like that. like herpes. It's like the herpes of the craft world. Okay, let's segue let's, out. Let's of strike that. that. We'll yeah. strike that. We're not going to strike that. That's going, Renita that's and I, say. though it looks like we'll be singing Christmas carols here <laughs> side by side, that's not what will be happening. So just bear with us. We're, we're very cozy, though. So <laughs> We need cocoa and Christmas carols. Again, we have to remind people, this is not a professional podcast by any means. Again, if you're looking for professionalism, please tune elsewhere, because yes. you will not find it here. <laughs> Maybe people could try VPR. Oh, I'm a I thinker. Do it. I won't do it. I won't. I won't quote Alec Baldwin. Okay. I probably shouldn't quote him at all at this moment. No, I would say he's probably not. No. Okay. We should be. I, I will say that if you want to, there is a great a Saturday Night Live episode for for Alec Baldwin with VPR. It's well worth it. Is it VPR or NPR? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. It's NPR. It's definitely NPR. Yeah. Tasty Treats, I think it was. Or yeah, Season's lie. Greetings. That's Or Season's... Shuffling right So I got some things I want to talk yeah. about. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> let's... let's <laughs> so I've asked Renita Marshall to come down here to talk to us about All In for Barry and also for her charity that we will be discussing. We wanted her to come down and just spend a few minutes and getting some information. So I guess what we're going to do here is we're going to hand it off to Renita and uh, have her explain who she is and what she's doing for the All In for Barry. So I am, for those who don't know, I am Renita Marshall. I have lived in Barry my entire life. I've been active on uh, city committees. I've done fundraising throughout the city for about 13 years uh, unofficially. And I'm kind of just around a lot. I uh, support local businesses. And um, so for the All In for Barry, uh, the Vermont Council on Rural Development reached out to me and asked if I was willing to chair their steering committee. And so after I spoke to them, um, I agreed to do that role. And so that's who I am and that's why I'm here. Excellent. I appreciate that. So what is All In for Barry? So as everyone who lives in Barry knows, as everyone in Barry knows, uh, we've spent many uh, iterations of city council trying to figure out how to make Barry the absolute best it can be. And so finally, the mayor invited in the Vermont Council on Rural Development, who has a process for this community forum system and so we started uh working on that where it was how what are the topics how are we going to create these topics how are we going to proceed what's the process and if we didn't have vermont council on rural development leading that i'm not sure we ever would have gotten to the point that we're at which is that our final report was actually released this week nice 
You can find it right now at the Vermont Council of Rural Development's website, but it will be available in hard copy at the library and I believe City Hall. Excellent. So what was the process for All In for Barry? So the first thing that we did is we developed a steering committee and um, that steering committee got together. <laughs> then as we were going through the whole process, we had community forum days, which generally you want to be in person. Uh, we offered it in a hybrid fashion which allowed the most important topics that were determined by the steering committee to have forums where people could come and give their opinions on those topics. And there were three time slots during the day, so basically you picked the three that were the most important to you and you went to them. And that was a community visit day. And then we had a follow-up community visit day where we had those topics that had been developed from those forums and what those issues were. And we had, um, <clears throat> there's a car honking. Hi. Um, <laughs> so we had a follow-up meeting and we got to vote again. And I loved how they did it because I admittedly was very surprised at what came out as our top three topics. Um, I really thought that it might go another direction, but I'm very pleased with the three topics that we chose. And uh, from there, we have now developed uh, task forces. So that was the process to get us to where we're at today. So I guess the first kind of question that should be asked is, was it political? There, It was not political. Uh, we did everything we could to keep politics out of it. And I want to express that in when we were looking for task force chairs, we purposely, because we do have, um, you know, we have our, our city council members who are being active. We have uh, state legislators that are being very active. We purposely made sure that the chairs were not in a political position currently. And the reason we did that is because we didn't want anyone to think that this was being swayed by politics at all. This is completely community, not politics. And um, I think that it's playing out very well that way. Nice. So I will pull up a slide here of the three groups mm -hmm. and also the individuals that are part of those groups. Mm -hmm. And I will let you introduce okay. each individual. Okay. Go. So for improving river access, Danielle Ozarski uh, stepped up as the chair. I, it wasn't even a question in my mind. I work with Danielle. She's a Vermont watershed planner with the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. She has been public about her interest in pursuing this topic. And she just, I say just recently, it hasn't been, you know, five years or more that she has uh, lived in Barry City. So she chose to come here. She loves living in Barry City and um, has this great idea about how we can better access our rivers. Uh, when we start looking at the Start a Barry Housing Task Force, we were fortunate enough that uh, we noticed that David Sickle, uh, who has 33 year, had 33 years of Vermont League of Cities and Towns under his belt, had him in there, and I reached out to him and said, please, 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 will you be the chair of this? Uh, he had some follow-up questions for me, and um, he has uh, graciously stepped up to lead that and we're very fortunate. People may know David. Uh, he's on the Barry Planning Commission and um, the Barry Area Development uh, Board. And then when we start talking about the develop a Barry Community Center, in my mind, as the steering committee chair, I we've we've been talking about a community center in Barry for as long as I can remember. I mean, it comes up. We need a teen center. We need something we we need a sense of community we need to not take away from seniors we need to not take away from the library so for me i wanted to see a, a fresh voice and so rebecca low presti uh, is an americorps member who was working at the granite museum she had a lot of experience uh, with grant writing and she is committed to the preservation of historic sites stories and places so i approached rebecca and said, you know, here we are, 
we've got all these historic places in Barrie that are empty or are being argued about. And um, I want some fresh eyes on this. And so she agreed. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited about what she's going to she's going to get done. Excellent. Excellent. So we're, we're going to dive down into those uh, three topics and dive down into the first one, which okay. is going to be river access. Okay. And so I've got a slide here, which tells us who the board member, the people on the members are. Yeah. It, if, are you going to be able to edit this? Because no. what's going on? It, so every time you touch it, it makes a noise. Okay, so I need to leave my hands alone. It, and he's not, it, it's, it, it's a struggle. Okay. The struggle's real. So don't move. <laughs> yeah, sure. I will yeah. no longer move. <laughs> I will not. Again, we're sorry, folks. We yeah. tried. <laughs> I was trying to be coy and ask the question, and it didn't work. So I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, no. And, and you know, as we've, have, as we've stated before, um, our purpose of this podcast is to get information out there. And we appreciate you coming down and telling us about this because this is kind of a big thing in Barry, right? This is huge. This is right. going to be huge. We could have some major outcomes from this. As we're talking about homelessness and affordable housing, mm-hmm. um, this housing task force is kind of looking at everything. And so until they come out with some recommendations, we just have to wait. But it's really exciting to find out because I know they've created subtask groups. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna, there's gonna be good stuff coming. Yeah, it's, it definitely, I would agree with you on that. Um, I know that uh, regarding the river access, uh, it, in the, the documentation, it does say, you know, celebrate the natural asset of the river and then improve points. I don't need to read this. It's right there, folks. Right. You can read it. Right. People can, yeah, they can read it. Can read it. <laughs> It's, I, I will say that I, I spent some time with uh, Danielle. And you loved her just like I, I do. I did. She she's, was amazing. She's but amazing. What I really enjoyed was the muffins that she made. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I heard so much about these muffins. Yes. Every time I hear about the river access is coming down to Danielle, all I hear about are these muffins every time. Every yeah. time. The muffins are fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we're really good. We were banana, blueberry. And... I'm sure she will be so excited that her muffins are going down in history. They are. They are. And and I had I had gone with her and we had done some drone footage over the river. Um, you know, specifically as as people see on the screen here, this is the old dam up by the pool, which I remember swimming there. Did you ever swim there? No, I went to the pool. You were a good person. I was. I was not. <laughs> I find that very, very hard to believe, but... I might have been naughty. I will say that at the, the corner of that, if you, 25, 30 years ago, you could actually put your hand on the corner and you could catch minnows. It was it was bizarre. And then, you know, further up that stream... Reason number two why I went to the pool. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. Wait, ready? So yeah, and th- these are the falls that's a further up, that's further up there in uh, Vermont Youth Conservation Corps created a path from the Rotary Park down to those falls and they're absolutely beautiful and I'm actually ashamed that that was the first time I've had been been to them. I've never been to them. And as you can see there's the the beach front there. It would be a nice place to access it. I, I definitely I, I was I was very impressed um, going up there with with her and I believe that was uh, Jim. Yes, Jim. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, wonderful people. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. I let them borrow my drone and they had some fun uh, flying that around. Uh, but yeah, it was I definitely saw what they were they were putting forth. Um, you know, it would be kind of nice to have that access. Um, so, so regarding that, we, we have the river access and then the housing. And I know that with the, uh, the 
housing portion of it. I'm just going to pull up another slide. Sorry, folks. So before we jump too far, um, I'm sure some people are curious about what that means, improving river access. Are we talking for boating? Are we talking fishing? I mean, what, what does river access entail specifically? And what does that mean to the community and what that river access is going to allow for? Those decisions have not yet been made. That's why we have the task force. Excellent. How far will we go? And I know we've got the housing task force, so we'll talk about that one right now. And not to be confused with the homelessness task force, because that's a it's a similar title. Correct. Some people might think that there's an association Correct. between those two, so two things. Yeah. The homelessness task force is a task force that's been created by the city council, where people are appointed to that council. This is a volunteer doesn't have anything to do with the city council. You may bring recommendations to the city council later, but this is a, a fully separate entity. And folks, we're we're desperately trying to figure out our mic situation. <laughs> it won't here. stay put. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Let's see what happens if you let go. We, we good? Okay, good? we just have to hold the mic, that's try. all. We're just going to keep trying. We'll keep all going. Right. So I'm looking at this this group of individuals here. I mean, we've got um, you know, Sam on there. I know that she owns several apartments in, in Barrie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got... That's Sam Jack. Hiscock. Yes, yep. that's correct. Yep. I'm, 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 I apologize. That's okay. We just probably should identify people. Correct. That is correct. And then, you know, Cody Morrison, who is... Mm -hmm. Part of the Barry Area Development Corps and also known as the executive director. He's the executive yes, director. He is the executive director. Oh, he's not just part of it. <laughs> That's correct. He's running the show. Yeah. That is correct. He is running the show. The big picture. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just, you know, Jackie Calder, who's on the planning commission. Right? She's still on the planning commission. I'm pretty sure she is. I don't know. This is where I look Oops. off because I don't know the answer. We should ob obviously ob uh, also mention that Michael's not great with associating names and, and people's roles, so it's... We got the Mickey Mouse on there. We, we could be misidentifying everybody on here for all that we know. That is very possible. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to deny that fact. So, and again, I'm curious about what this housing task force will accomplish, and maybe those goals haven't been set yet. Are we looking at affordable housing? Uh, that that The housing stock... Uh, you know, th are, those are the types of things, though, that are possibly being considered. Um, Everything is being con everything's being considered right now, and I'm going to tell you in advance that the Community Center Task Force has not decided what they're going to be doing. So they don't know where they're going to be going. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, uh, people see Barry Housing Task Force, and they may think of Barry Housing Authority. They may think of homelessness, building new houses, affordability, a frequent buzz term in city council is housing stock and the weatherization of it. So, you know, just as much clarification check, and check, ideas and, check, check, and things check, as check. we can, can get out there to people. Will, They're considering everything. Nothing has been decided. Excellent. And I mean, I think one of the things that, you know, talking about housing, the, I, I think there's, we talk about affordable housing. And when I say affordable housing, what it means to me might actually mean something different to you. When I think of about when I think about affordable housing, I'm thinking cheap housing, you know, meaning like it doesn't purchase, cost that. Purchase that, price. What? Cheap purchase price. Correct. Cheap pur purchase price. A place where I can go, and I'm not going to be subject to you know rain, snow falling on my head in the middle of the night. That's what I think of. I don't think of, you know, something really pretty or anything like that. That's I. I Affordable housing is like that, but there are, there's different meanings for that. Right. Am Everybody's right? bringing forth their opinions and everyone is being included. And that's going to be what is crucial as they work through these, which is why I think it's also um, their plan to create sub task force was brilliant because people want to focus. Everybody came to this with why they wanted to focus on something. And so this allows them to kind of particulate that down a little bit. And look at that fancy word. That's excellent. I probably used it wrong, though. I was going to say granulate, but... 
Particulate. Yeah, I probably used it wrong. Particulate it down. Uh, so that's what that's one of the reasons that they're doing all of this work. They are in the very beginning stages. I believe they've only had their first or maybe second meetings so far. Uh, so this is going to take a while. This is going to take a while. One question I do have: Is there a time frame? on when things will be coming forward and you know is this a, a one-year planning process a three-year planning process five years you know when not when should people expect to hear something but you know when when would be a reasonable time frame to think that ideas and and whatnot will be moving forward so it's going to depend on what they end up deciding to do. So let's think about it this way. If a community center comes up, because everybody has a different idea of what the community center should be. So say it is just working with the library and we're going to turn the basement into the community center. That's quick. We could easily do that. If the community center means getting grants and loans and a whole team together to build or completely refurbish an empty location that we have now that could be years so we asked our chairs to uh, commit to at least a year of leading the group and what you know I would expect that probably small steps are going to come out of that because of these t subtask groups so while we're looking for a community center somebody may be already saying we need to start reaching out to the library, the senior center, um, the center for independent living type situations to start programming. And so then there would be an update. Are these groups meeting on a regular basis, like every two weeks, once a month? And was there a universally decided upon date of when all the groups will get back together and give an updated presentation to the community? So they are uh, currently meeting, I believe, once a month. Every group is meeting once a month. And then uh, I think it's going to be quarterly. We're going to all get together. Well, I'm going to get together with the chairs. And they're going to update me. And then we're going to start having conversations about when would it be appropriate to probably come to a city council meeting and provide an update so that anybody can see it, anybody can watch the video and catch up and, and hear it from there. Excellent. And we'll just uh, do the slide for the Barry Community Center. And this way we, we know what we're, I mean, we've kind of already <laughs> we kind of We kind of just floated right into we, that. We did, we did. So, so I mean, I guess the, the other question for you is, you know, is there anything, are we able to participate still or... Yep. Anyone who wants to participate can get a hold of any of the chairs. They can get a hold of me, uh, and we will get you connected so that you can you can still join. So they're they're taking minutes. They're sending out agendas. They can get you caught up to speed fairly quickly. So again, if you if you're interested in getting involved, you can go to the you send an email off to the the chairs and and have them you know, speak to them about that's the getting most, involved. That's going to that's gonna be your most direct path. And where would we find the minutes or notes or any of that stuff? Are they being updated and published somewhere where people could find them? No. So this is not a public meeting law. It doesn't fall under the public meeting law. These are all just volunteers. You would need to reach out to the chair and ask if you could see those. Excellent. So I appreciate you coming here for that. Okay. And... You know, we, we actually just came from the, the alumni hall. We did. Yes, we were all three of us. Rap uh, yes, yeah, yeah. All three of Rich us. was there. Yes, Rich well, was no, I, there. I just meant that all three of us uh, just came from there. Yes. We, we could mean many different things. Yeah. That yes. is, that all, is a good point. All three of us were at alumni hall and then came down here after all being at the alumni hall. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason we, all three of us, three here, we, we're all at Alumni Hall, is what, Michael? We were wrapping gifts for Christmas for kids. We have we have a squeaky arm. You have, I know. We have a squeaky arm. So every time Rich and I try to share the mic, it, it makes lots of noise. I know. I, I wonder if wonder if I, like, lowered my volume. Well, I can't really. I was trying to say get closer to the mic. I'm just going to cut through that. Yeah, by just saying it. So room. back to why the three of us were all three of us. We're right. up at, we're all three of us. Yes, right, right. 
in any of that scenario. If you want, we can switch it up. You can be one, one, two, three. But all three of us were at Alumni Hall together for what again, Michael? Uh, Christmas for kids. We were wrapping the presents. <laughs> My and... favorite. I know. <laughs> we were wrapping presents. Uh, Mayor Lucas Herring was there. Uh, Jeffrey Tupper Giles was there. Tupper Giles. Tupper Giles. Oh. Owner of the Reynolds House Inn. He's going to be really angry with me. He's going to say he can't believe you messed up his name. He listens. At least, I will. At least you said uh, Lucas's name correct. Uh, that is true. <laughs> Lucas. And- and we also had Jason Flurry. Yep. And, and his Flurry. and his daughter Kate. Yep. And then her friends, her friends, her friends Peter and and, and Anthony. Anthony. Yes. Or, not... or Anthony and Peter. Yes. As the case may be. That, Those are two probably, separate people, not yes. to be confused with our state rep, Peter Anthony. That's correct. We definitely don't want to do that. But it was it was what, two hours, two and a half hours? We spent of... uh, two and a half hours there wrapping wrapping gifts. And yep. I apologize and... for any of the gifts that people received that I wrapped because Wrapping is not my favorite thing to do. I am not great at it, but it's not about me and what I'm what I'm capable or not capable of doing. So it doesn't really matter. Footballs and skateboards are hard to wrap. Yes, yes they are. We have a story about a skateboard, but we're not going to share it here. If you see Renita, she will gladly tell you the story of Lucas wrapping the skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Oy, that was a task. Yeah, that was a task. That was a task. And funny. Um, but, so, another thing that, you know, we're, we have you here Teaser. For, yes. Uh, you know, regarding really great charitable things is... <laughs> First of all, why? So, um, why? Um, I grew up with a mom who did everything she could to provide everything she possibly could to us. And as a child, it, it just sometimes felt like I got shorthanded. Um, and I remember being disappointed and that sounds like a petty, terrible thing to say as I look at an adult, as an adult and say, you know, it's a gift and it's not supposed to be about gifts, but when you're six or eight and you're expecting, you know, big things from Santa, even though I wasn't always good, but other people who weren't good got presents. Um, I, it was just, it would be disappointing. And so when, uh, I had heard a neighbor, well, I didn't hear, I saw on Facebook, she posted a note to her daughters and she said, we don't need a tree or presents. As long as we've got each other, we're going to all have a great Christmas. And I thought, no, not my neighbor. This is literally in my neighborhood. This is not going to happen. And so I rallied some friends that year, and we covered everything that they needed. And it was really small, um, but they were so unbelievably appreciative. The daughters were old enough to understand. Uh, They... We got a few gifts that they could give to mom, which made them feel really good. And so I thought that was it. And then the next year, I see, you know, somebody 
switch jobs. And because of the job switch, they weren't getting a paycheck for four weeks before Christmas. And they had two small boys. And so, all right, well, let's help them out. And it got a little bigger. And it continued to get bigger until here we are. I can't remember if it's 13 or 14 years that we've been doing this. And so last, I knew that I wanted to incorporate in 2020. I made it a goal. And so I did that and became legitimate. And awesome. I'll never forget my accountant said, you are now as legitimate as the Red Cross. And I cried. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. That's wicked awesome. So about the check for $1 million, <laughs> I will be on it. When I saw that, I was like, $1 million? How, 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 what? So I ordered from Granite City Graphics, who I can't thank uh, Travis Oaks and his team enough. They step up for every single thing that I want. And uh, every single time it's usually, can I have that by, you know, two days? And he's like, yes, we can get that done for you. So that is actually a whiteboard check and I can use it when writing out checks to other people. Jokingly, uh, his like left arm, Jamie, uh, made the joke that I could just make that check out to them. And I was like, okay. So as a joke, when I took that picture, I made the track check out to Travis and Jamie for a million dollars and it's useless because we don't, we don't, if we had a million dollars, uh, things would look quite different for our foundation than they do. <laughs> yeah. Slide that into the ATM slot. I dare you. <laughs> so, I mean, we definitely want to let people know that they should go, if they're on Facebook, they should go on to Facebook and like your page. Mm -hmm. um, like and share. Like and and share. share. I'm also on Instagram. What's that? Okay, so anyone who has been born in the last 40 years, Instagram, you know what it is. Michael, you might know it better as the gram. Oh, or, or Insta. Oh, okay. Insta. I'm going to Insta. Insta. I'm gonna... No, yeah. it's not the Insta. It's just it's Insta. Not, it's not the Facebook. It's not it's the, the anything. <laughs> it's never the anything. No. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't. I don't use Instagram. Michael doesn't know how to use the gram. I do not. I do not. Many I, people do, so I am on Instagram as well. Are you on Twitter? <laughs> wow. I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> Disclaimer, po folks, we are not professionals. Michael, I promise, is not is not over the age of 60. So any of you confused by his calling things the, the Facebook, the Instagram, and Twitter or whatever it was that you just said. I apologize profusely for that. So I've actually had a Twitter account before. I deleted it. It is what it is. I have one. I don't use it very often, but I do not have one for the foundation page. So hey, no, I, it's. I also don't follow Tito that much. Exactly. Obviously, I was joking. Right. Did Ooh, you get on the Snapchat though? <laughs> I do have Snapchat. Got snap. I got Snapchat. <laughs> He's got... I don't ever use it, though. Oh. He's got the I do with I my kids. Get the Snapchat. I use Snapchat with my kids. For the record, I don't say the Facebook <laughs> in general <laughs> conversation. Uh, you know, I'm not... <laughs> do you chicken peck when you type? He's got to go to the doctor. <laughs> He's got to go to the doctor. He's got the coughs. <laughs> 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 timing <laughs> impeccable timing okay anyway yeah. anyway we back digress to back to serious stuff yeah so i mean definitely go on facebook and and like and share so what if i want to give you some money to help your charity so there are lots of ways you can give me money um if you go on to our facebook page we do have a donate button that you can donate to uh, right there on the page you can mail me a check. I still take old-fashioned checks. They get made out to, uh, I don't make you spell out the whole foundation, and the bank will accept R-M-H-H-F instead of having to write it all out. And so you can mail me a check to my home. I'm happy to give that address. It's all public information. A quick Google search, you'll find out where I live. And you can Venmo me. You can pay. You got the Venmo? I've got the Venmo. Do you have the PayPal? I have the PayPal and the Venmo, and I've accepted Facebook payments through 
like a, the chat function, which is something someone can do. I did not know that. Well, yeah. that's not true. I didn't know yeah. My son introduced me to that, and he's 23. I've never used it. I didn't know you could just, like, chat someone money. But you can. It's right in the chat on the Facebook. On the Facebook? Mm-hmm. Yep. The Facebook. So, in case anybody was wondering, originally it was called the Facebook. Nobody was wondering. Nobody cared. <laughs> was that before or after Zuckerberg had to pay was, for stealing it? Uh, it was, I think it was before the Tweedle Bombs or whatever their names were. Oh, Tweedle yes. Tweedle Bumps or Tweedle, Tweedle? Tiddlywinks? No. Tiddlywinks? Uh, we got to be careful. Move. We're, st- <laughs> we're moving on. Moving along, would you like to share some of what's going on this year with your foundation yes. and some of the things that you're doing in relation to the Christmas gifts and families? Boy, would I ever. Thank you for asking. (laughs) So when we went into it this year, I set a fundraising goal of $10,000 and thought during a pandemic, I'm never going to get $10,000, but I wanted to make sure that I kept myself driven by setting a goal that I thought was so high. We are at about $22,000. We've spent approximately $1,300 in scholarships and supplies that we've needed for various events. And our bank account, as of today, only has $2,529 in it. So all the rest of that has gone directly back into our community. So, you know, we've $3,500 is missing. We've put about $17,000 back into the community. So this year for accomplishments, 16 kids got family swim passes. Uh, We paid for at least four confirmed swim lessons, but then we just wrote a check to the Barry City Rec Department for anybody who had money that was owed Um, so we just covered everybody who signed up for swim lessons we completely covered two families for uh, back to school supplies Uh, we bought five hundred dollars worth of school supplies that went to Barry City and Barry Town we donated three hundred dollars worth of toys to Toys for Tots we bought a annual membership to the Imagination Station um, through Washington County Mental Health we provided a six hundred dollar scholarship to the Elks Club for the Aiden uh, Shannon Scholarship to Silver Towers. And for Christmas, we have covered eight families, which includes 24 children this year. Wow. I'm at the point that I'm saying I have to, I can't accept any more families because I'm just running out of time and uh, need some time to actually focus on my family as well. Could you talk about how the families are selected for let's say Christmas in particular or the holidays. Um, There's been some questions around the city council selection process and I I think that's been clarified by now on how that's done both with Officer Flurry, the school, and I believe uh, DCF also helps with that selection process. But um, just to clarify for people so that they don't, there's not any um, misconceptions about maybe potentially overlapping between donations with yourself, city council, or anybody else out there. Happy, uh, happy to explain it. So these families that I generally get are nominated by someone else. These are families that were not going to ask for help from someone. They were going to get through their difficult time the best that they could because that's what they've always done. And so someone nominates them because they want them to have a break. So when your child is sick and you're driving to Dartmouth every single week while you're also battling your own medical issues that have you in and out of the hospital and you think, I'm just going to suck it up and we'll get through, that's when we say, you know what, don't focus on Christmas. So I then will reach out to the families, let them know that someone has nominated them and that we would like to do this for them. And I explain what our process is. So we don't ever divulge who we're uh, taking care of. I broke that rule for the first time this year, and I'll explain why I did that this year for one family out of the eight. Um, so one family in the past has actually said, I appreciate it so much, but our situation has improved. And so we're, we'll pass, we'll pass on this, go help somebody else. Every other family immediately is just overwhelmed with the idea that somebody um, thought of them. And so then I get their list of what do your kids want and give me your wish list items. What do, what is their dream gift? And we have been able 
in all the years I've done it, been able to get every single gift that every child has ever asked for, except for we did not purchase one, and that was a $1,200 adjustable basketball net. Um, we just couldn't justify that cost. We weren't even official at that time. But instead, we sent him and his mom to a Celtics game. So, wow. So yeah, so they got to do that instead. But that's how it comes to us. They give us all the information of what they want for gifts. We do not wrap the gifts. We give them the supplies to wrap the gifts. The family feels so much more connected when they come to them and they get to sit down. And maybe they have two daughters and we got two Barbie dolls, but one's wearing a pink dress and one's wearing a purple dress. And they know one daughter likes pink more than purple. They can decide who gets which Barbie doll. Uh, and it it really has just been so very successful. I keep the receipts if any, because they some families do ask for clothing items. If the clothing items don't fit or somebody happened to buy, you know, a pair of sweatpants for, say, a, a preteen girl and they said juicy on the butt and the parents don't think that's appropriate, they can return that to me and I will make sure that it gets returned. Uh, so there's never any pressure that they have to take anything that they don't want or that they are uncomfortable with. And I think it's important that you clarify that because I know with the um, coin drop and the city council that there's been some questions about whether the families know what's coming and you know how their feelings are about that. If it were to be a surprise, if they would feel a little bit of, of embarrassment that they were receiving presents that they may not think they needed. So. I think that's a really important step is, is to um, speak to the family so they know it's coming and that nobody's surprised and, uh, you know, feels embarrassed by that. So that's that's really, really a key factor for me. I would agree with that. And I, I just on a conversation about that, I can, from the city council perspective and the Christmas for Kids program, that is not the case. Um, we They know that they are getting those, those gifts and if they because there was some conversation about that whether or not um, individuals knew they did know mm -hmm. and just wanted to clarify that mm -hmm. yep and that's how we do it too and no information goes out about the family until the parents have given me the permission to share that information and again they get very they give me very detailed stories of so what's going on and they are very open with me about what is going on in their lives, and I have to turn that into a paragraph that is going to make people want to help this family. And I've done it every single year with, like I said, with no problems whatsoever. So back to the one family that kind of got outed. Um, Rich McSheffrey, who we all know and uh, is just himself a wonderful giver in this community, uh, his wife works with a woman whose daughter, after battling cancer for four years, uh, it has progressed terribly. And she has three daughters. So Rich shared a GoFundMe, which did, at least gave, I believe, just the first name. Um, and maybe, maybe had given her, given the girl's, uh, the mom's last name. I reached out to Rich and said, I want to help this mom and I'm going to completely cover Christmas for whatever she needs. And so got in touch with the grandmother who gave us a, a, a list. And so when I put it out, I said, you know, this is the first time I'm kind of identifying someone. And the reason I did that is because not only had Rich put out the GoFundMe, but John Lyon up at Wilkins, who is also an amazing, giving, caring, supporter of ours, the community, everything, he would also put out that he was fundraising for the same mom, Amanda. Um, he was also fundraising for her. And I didn't want anyone to feel like we were competing for money. So no matter where you put the money, whether you supported Rich or John or myself, it was all going to one family. And I did, I just did, I was so afraid people would be let, be thinking, you know, oh, well, how do I choose? You didn't need to choose. And I wanted that to be crystal clear, that you didn't need to choose. And so that was the only time that I've ever identified who the family is. I've had a couple of families come forth on their own and say, Renita helped me. Um, but I still do not mention their names when I'm doing these kind of chats. 
understand that. Yeah, we will see you guys this week. You guys I cry know. every day in December. I swear every day. It's it's shocking to me that groups that I don't really have anything to do with uh, reach out to me and want to help me, and I'm blown away that they know my name. That's awesome. Yeah. We appreciate it. Appreciate uh, you giving us a little information about mm-hmm. that. And anything else you want to share on that? The one thing I want to do is I want I do want to talk about the local collaborations because I want people to support local. Uh, we have a lot of businesses that have given donations to our silent auctions and all of them, and I can't even list all of those, but thank you to the Berry Partnership for getting me connected to all of them. We are a member of the Berry Partnership, uh, so having that list and being able to reach out to everyone has been amazing. But some of the collaborations that we did do, Berry Elks Lodge 1535, Wilkins Harley-Davidson, Washington County Mental Health Services, Berry Recreation Department, just recently, the Vermont State Police, the Catholic Daughters from St. Monica's, Preston's Kia, Vermont Quick Lube in South Barrie, the Ben and Jerry's Foundation wrote us a check, Lawson's Finest, Drink Up, they wrote us a check, uh, the National Life Group Foundation, Granite City Graphics, Granite City Group Fitness, Rooted Yoga, Bobby Bartlett at State Farm Insurance, Chris King and Emily York at King Realty. Um, We're going to exceed our $22,000 because of them. They've committed $50 to every closing from this year to come to us as a donation. Wow. And uh, so I'm waiting till the end of the year because I keep seeing them post. We were supposed to connect one day and they said, oh, we've got another closing. I was like, that's okay. That's all right. You take your time. We'll connect on December 31. Uh, Barbecue. Remember Barbecue from uh, he would sit in the park in the summers and sell his sauces, and he did a fundraiser for us. The Reynolds House Inn, Emsley the Flourish, J.A. Gould, and the First Presbyterian Church are all. And But, I mean, I could go up and down this street, and I could list Nelson's gave us something, Wobby's gave us something. Um, every, everybody, everybody gave us something. So I, I do everything with this community, and I don't do anything without including them, and I'm completely transparent keeping it local I think that's extremely important it's dear to my heart I am all about local connections and you know I I think it's really important and this is really awesome to hear thank you I did I did get a request uh as we were first starting I think last year we had only incorporated in November and then of course Christmas we're ready for Christmas and I did get a request for up in Newport and unfortunately I had to say no to that because it was just all the donations that had come in at that point were local and I felt like the money needed to stay local Um, but I did point them in the direction of some resources in Newport that they could reach out to to get assistance for that family but I did have to say no to that one. Excellent. Thank you. Of course. We appreciate you uh, coming in. Of course. So you can't leave yet. I was going to say, are you going to talk about chickens now? Because well, I can go. Well, wait, wait. No. I'm going to ask but you a wait. question. There's so more. I'm noticing there is more. Okay. So I'm noticing you're very festive today. Mm-hmm. So the question for you, because, you know, other people in this room have talked about Christmas music. Oh. Is that you, number two? No. I don't know what we're talking about Christmas music. I have no well, idea where we're going down this well, road. Well, I'm just going to ask the question, what's your favorite Christmas song? Mary, Did You Know by Kenny Rogers. Wow, that was really quick and one that I have not heard. I've never heard that one. I've heard Mary, Did You Know from Mark. You have not heard Kenny Rogers' version of Mary, Did You Know? I guess I'm just an island in the stream somewhere. Kenny Rogers. You didn't get that reference? Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton saying islands in the stream? Yeah, really. <laughs> Kenny Rogers was like my all time favorite. Kenny Rogers. Try it this way. Legitimately don't know. Who what about? Oh, okay. What about Kenneth Rogers? Oh. <laughs> yeah, there those of us who know him well call him Kenneth. Yeah. Stage name's yeah. Kenny. He passed. Yeah. I, I I literally cried for two days when Kenny Rogers died. Yeah. That's too bad. He hates it. He told me. He died of like cancer, right? No, he was no, he was just really old. 
We saw him live, and I cried during the concert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! Everybody's, everybody's and Renita just, just left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. My friends know how much I love Kenny Rogers, and they are like, she's really getting mad at him right now. Because she knows. How come you haven't asked me about my favorite song? Which is? Because it's I don't okay, care. Awful. I have, oh, okay, I have so two favorite songs for the holidays. Okay, okay. I like the Hanukkah song by Adam Sandler. <laughs> of course you do. And I like the version of DMX singing <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. That's okay. particularly enjoyable that's, for I me. DMX was a type of bicycle. That's a BMX. That's a BMX. Oh. <laughs> don't make me say the Facebook again. Do, do I have to look it up on the Google? <laughs> <laughs> Ask the Siri to find it. Hey, the Siri, can you find DMX the bicycle? <laughs> no. Nothing. No, I got nothing on so there. Nothing. Let me, let me ask you guys. Have you heard William Shatner's Christmas album? I would never. I can answer with a positive on that of no and no, I will not be. Oh, not, ever. It's, not ever. It's fantastic. I'm not. I'm not nerdy enough. He was on the Star Trek, right? Yeah. Yes, he was on the Star Trek, not Trek. Trek. Not, right, not Trek with an E. Yes. Star Trek. 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 No. Trek. 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 Not like that. Oh. We could do this all oh, night. Uh, poor Michael. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to host a nice informational community. We're, we're hosting a nice. And I'm just here nice, messing nice, it all up. Nice. You're, 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 yeah, hey, you're, you're taking this. Oh, I'm having to keep leaning. <laughs> <laughs> All these microphone issues. Okay. So we'll, we'll figure out the microphone issues. I mean, at least I got the video uh, to play. Before 10 minute mark. But yes, yes, it was. Last time it was just our logo, which is not our official logo because that was one that I threw together and at like 12 o'clock at night because that's when I do my best work. <laughs> <laughs> The night before. Uh, <laughs> I'm not helping. You're, you're not helping okay. this conversation. Right. I try my best. Moving along. So, so it's nice Next on VPR. Know. Yes. <laughs> People are going to want to watch now because they're going to oh, know how yeah. fun this can this, be. It is. We have a lot of fun. Coming up next on NPR. <laughs> Birds. Are they real or government drones? You decide. <laughs> Why are they so angry? Birds are angry. Really? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have. Have you seen? Been, Michael, what else do we have to talk about tonight? Michael. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do. We do get a lot of things, but I do want to. Like, I know that sometimes in the morning when I wake up, I I hear the murder of crows that are flying around. Let me tell you something. That is sketch. Could you clarify why you use the term murder? I know why, but other people may not think may not know why you use the term murder of crows. Because when you have more than one crow, it's a murder. Thank you. Whereas if you have more than one ferret, it's a business. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> business? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's good. So what else are we talking about, chickens? Yeah. Yes. So so now that we we. Unless you want to stick around and talk about chickens. No, but I live in the same neighborhood as you, and I also hear the murder in the morning. It's creepy. It's a little it's creepy. A, it's uncomfortable. Like, I, I hear them. Let's blame Carl. Maybe he feeds them. Could be. He would. He's a good guy I, like that. So if he's like, that murder looks hungry. And, and this is, it's on the YouTube. Um <laughs> If you haven't run away yet. <laughs> but, but there's the, more. When I hear the name Carl, the first thing I think of is llamas with hats. Again, like I have no idea what you're talking about. Carl. No? No? Not working for you? No. I will post it in the link somewhere. Good, because everyone else will know. I, I'm sure. But anyway, no, no I, hopefully, Look, hopefully. This is my know. lost face. This is something. It, that's okay. That's it, okay. Can, how's your lost face look? This is mine. He 
we've got lost lip islands in the stream. <laughs> so, I mean, with all due respect, I mean. That's usually followed by an insult. So, no. <laughs> with all due respect, no. <laughs> All right. I think you're okay. done with me. Yes. Yes. So I wanted to say thank you so much for having me on here. No, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. We wanted to get the information out there. And it, again, uh, a quick search on the Google, and you will find the Foundation's Facebook page. You'll also find any contact information you need from me. I'm always happy to speak to anyone. And if anyone has any ideas about where we can use our funds throughout the community, we are also looking for those as we are moving past Christmas. So thinking about spring. I'm sure that in the, uh, the comment section, you'll, you'll probably post your information as well. I sure will now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that idea. That's a great idea. Watching the podcast. I thought maybe it would be part of your brilliantly done slideshow, but I will pick up that slack and make sure that it is done. That was a, that was a slam? A little. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we're using that for. All right. With that, I am so going no to. Chickens? I'm not sticking around to talk about chickens. I told you the only way I am going to argue about chickens is whether they come in original recipe or extra crispy. <laughs> it's the only way I'm arguing, and it better be extra crispy. Nice. Yeah. Thank Excellent. You Thank you for coming. Thank we you. appreciate it. And, and folks, we do apologize for, for any audio issues. We're still working on it, and I dare not touch my microphone because it's got... It's got glitter. On Michael's it. petrified like I, I am petrified of snakes. So yeah, no, you have fiber needles. Except yeah. snakes are snakes are a little more dangerous than glitter. I would rather hold snakes. Moving along, let's uh, try to wrestle this back on the road of uh, productive production here. Michael, what are we what are we talking about here? All right, so what we've what I've decided to do is just pull up the council agenda because I think Great that's idea. that's probably just something that we should just go down through. Sure, let's do it. All right, so. but it Any, is what it is. Anyways, I know you had a, another item on there that was a particular personal interest to you, so I'll let you uh, I mean, shuffle the conversation along to I that. Love talking about the animal in the power room. Yes, please, please enlighten everyone. Is. One, two, three, maybe four times. Every single time I've tried to get leashes on cats. Please, please enlighten everyone <laughs> because there's a, a number of people that are probably not aware of what this yeah, is. So, I mean, we had a conversation about the animal and fowl ordinance uh, six, eight, nine, ten months ago, maybe last year. I can't remember. It was within the last year. Calendar sure. year. It was yeah. in the last calendar year. Yes, I was a part of it. So the animal and fowl ordinance, we we had that conversation, and you know we we kind of clawed back some of the restrictions on specifically the chicken part portion of the ordinance, and there was some some conversation about it. And it, for those that remember, years and years ago, we had a very significant conversation about chickens. Uh, people were showing up with signs in the city council chambers, and there was there was some problems in Ward One with individuals with chickens. So we we kind of over uh, probably over ordinance it, um, you know, cracked down probably a little too much. So this last time we clawed it back a bit, uh, allowed people a little more freedom. Uh, at the same time, we removed all animal licenses except for dogs because by statute we have to do that. Which, as a side note, cats were the only one that you didn't have to license in the city of Barrie. If you had a cricket for a pet, you had to license the cricket. But you can have 20 cats at your house and there's not a problem with that. Anyway, so, so we, there was more conversation about the chickens. Uh, and what we decided at that time was to create a animal and fowl task force to go through the ordinance and um, decide what is really needed. And they went through the ordinance and they like took out almost all the chicken um, ordinance section. It's like almost all gone. And which is, you know, and, and I think about it from 
you know, we're in a, a situation right now where we're looking at supply chain issues, right? So, and I, you know, get my tinfoil hat on, you know, all that wonderful stuff. You know, maybe we're going to have some problems down the road. Should we really be restricting people's abilities to, to create their own food in their backyard? And I think that that's probably some thought that went into that um, when they they clawed everything back from the setbacks and everything else and they took more of a don't ruin someone else's life kind of approach and focus more on the nuisance avoidance and just basically got rid of almost everything in the, the chicken the chicken portion of it so what are what are what's on the agenda for specific discussion is that you're saying that this coming forward is the result of the group yep. cutting a lot of it out yep and um i guess did we know the members of the animal task force that helped you helped create so this i think is it rachel who's i don't think it's here i know that john Page I, is on it. I was but trying I mean, to tell you if you went to the city website real quick, it would tell you. Oh, it tells yeah, you the that's members right. of all the committees. So if you go to barrycity.org, you can also find a lot of information. And I just went there, and the people that were on it are Carrie Fredette, Heather Papino, Heather Runk, Amy Dickinson, and John LePage. So those individuals were the ones that were tasked to do that. I actually looked through the ordinance and I'm not overly concerned about it. Okay, I, good. I think, I, and, and it will definitely get a lot of conversation, okay. but it's, it's not, it's when you step back and think about well, what's the purpose of the ordinance and the purpose of the ordinance is to make it so that your next door neighbor isn't smelling You've the got a family that you're wanting so, to collect eggs for and have your own eggs. Great. If you don't want to live next door to a flock of chickens, I can understand that as well. I mean, I think a lot of people move to a city setting like Barry, thinking that they're giving up some of the freedoms they would have if they lived in a more rural setting. And at uh, the same token, people live in the city because it's more affordable than other areas and feel they have a right to eat the food that they grow and, and raise themselves. So would agree. I can see it both ways. I would agree. I don't think my opinion is, or my feelings are as strong as yours are about this topic. No, actually, I don't really care. I mean, I, I definitely don't... would not expect to be living in the city limits and have a hen house next to me full of chickens. That might be a little over the top. Um, but I, I will say this. I, I would not have a problem with somebody in my neighborhood having chickens that were roaming around, including on my property, although... I don't know how my dog would handle that. Well, and I think that I would appreciate it because they eat ticks. Ticks. But I think that's the, I hate ticks. That's the issue with the free range chickens is going onto other people's property. What happens to that to them if they're on the property? Who's responsible? Is the owner who allows the chickens to cross the property lines responsible? Is the property owner whose property something happens on responsible? If they get in a road. And they become distractions for drivers you know who's responsible at that point and what's the expectations for drivers you know are you swerving to hit them are you hitting them if they're in the way you know i think that is more of a concern for me those questions instead of you know them being next to me i might be wrong on this but i think state statute says if they're not on your property they're free game hmm, interesting i might be wrong somebody can google that on the google <laughs> yeah i don't i don't and i don't know that any of that stuff so but i'm just looking at the time that we've been recording here and we're probably we maybe exceeded I the again. we exceeded the one hour time Did frame uh, i can see the timer running right now down on the bottom right corner there with that red dot is one hour and 20 minutes yeah. i may actually delete some of this yeah we should probably uh move to close the show yeah that is true i so we're going to close the, the <laughs> show. Uh, we appreciate uh, you guys listening. 
Thanks for and tuning in, folks. Absolutely. Please leave your comments in the the comment section. <laughs> like, share, comment. <laughs> like, share, comment. And, you know, like I said, we're working on it. And hopefully we'll, we'll get better. We can only get better, everybody. That's, right. That's what we're going to keep saying until we're the best. So That's right. you'll hear it every week. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to Renita Marshall for coming in and Absolutely. joining us today. Yep. Um, it's always nice to get another voice in here and uh, hear from the people that are making things happen in the city. Yep, absolutely. So. All right. Have a great night. Good night. Thank you, JD. Fine, well, productions. We love you.